evening, CCF Eastwood. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Andy. Gino and Andy is one of our um, servants here at CCF Eastwood. They are representing Big Eastwood. That uh, Again, it meets every Friday, so they will be launching starting this, fr um, this Friday. All right, so good evening. Happy Chinese New Year to all of you. <laughs> yes. Meron po isang Chinese dito, I know. <laughs> um, and for those who will be celebrating soon sa mga couples and mga, uh, mga married dyan, advance happy Valentine's Day sa inyo. Okay, so we are in this new series. You are in for a treat because live po tayo tonight. The 10 a.m. and the 3 p.m. worship services earlier, they were all live streamed from Maine. Usually when there is a new series, it's usually live stream. But you're in for a treat. I am here and I am I will be speaking to you guys tonight. Oh hold on, what happened? Kuya J, hindi lumalabas yung aking notes. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, so it's as always, it's a privilege to speak to this crowd. And um can I just ask you guys to, um, if, I, if you could welcome my parents who's joining us for the second or the third time. They flew all the way from San Francisco, California. They're just visiting here. They have about two more weeks with us. <laughs> and this is actually the first time that they're watching me speak, okay? So, medyo kabado po ako, okay? <laughs> all right, so now I want to start by asking, what enters your mind when you hear the following? First, Starbucks. What enters your mind? Coffee. Coffee. You know, meron ba nagsabi ng planner? You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or um, Nike. Shoes. I found out recently, may nagtanong, sino ba yung may hawak palagi ng camera dyan na maporma na naka Nike na high cut? Ako pala yun. <laughs> so, yun. So, I'm known for that. <laughs> Gucci. Bags. Okay. How about Mercedes-Benz? Cars. Okay. How about Netflix? Huh? Ano daw? Ha? Huh? Ano sabi? <laughs> okay. Google. Okay. Iba-iba yung sagot. And then finally, we have Christian. Nanahimi kayo lahat. I'm glad nobody said Christian Dior. <laughs> All right. So um, there was a survey done where they asked fellow Christians what they think of one another. So it's on. So the top four positive characteristics that evangelical, evangelical Christians apply to themselves, 72% said that um, the Christians are loving. And then the other 71% said that they were compassionate. 71 said that they are giving. And 62% said that Christians were respectful. Maybe this survey was done here in CCF Eastwood because this is how we feel about one another, right? <laughs> okay. All right, so, so can you ask the person seated next to you, Ikaw ba yan? Ganyan ka ba? Yes? <laughs> okay, nagtawanan. All right. But there was another study done where they interviewed people who don't belong to any church. So here. So it uh, came to the negative characteristic to those with no religious affiliation. So 55% said that the Christians are hypocritical. These are the ones that um, they say one thing and they do, they, they do uh, something else. They said that they were judgmental and 50% said that they were self-righteous. They are thinking that they are good in God's eyes, but they're not really doing that. They're doing something else. And I'm sure there are a lot more other not-so-nice things that is in that survey, right? So if the unbelievers see us as hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous, perhaps what we need to do is we need to humble ourselves. And we need to um, think about what we are known for. So can you turn to your family or friends seated next to you and you tell them what they are known for? Just tell them, just whisper to them, you're known for being loving, being patient, or something. And I guess if you did not hear from the person seated next to you, baka 
it's not very nice, <laughs> okay? Uh, it, it's probably the opposite. So a Swedish industrialist, Alfred Nobel, said that every man ought to have the chance to correct his epitaph in midstream and write a new one. I don't know what people think about you, but um, we must not be defined by our, by our past. My family perhaps think of me as the Alex who is Pasaway and all of these other negative aspects, but uh, we won't be discussing that today. Maybe not so nice things. The good news is God does not see our past. He sees our future, what we can actually become. So for the upcoming weeks, we will be talking about love. We will be talking in this series entitled Love Rediscovered and Learn What Love Is All About. So hope you can guess, you hope that you can join us for the entire series. So what is love? What is love? So baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Meron ba nakakaalam sa inyo nun? Yes! <laughs> so for those 90s people, that is 90s, had, had a way. Huwag kayong mag-smile dyan as if you don't know. Ah. <laughs> okay. So I, I had that tune stuck in my head while I was preparing that message. and just had to get it out. I'm sorry. So I think for most of us, feel that love is important to us as, as well as expressing love to other people. Receiving love and expressing love. Don't you agree? Right? So, but what I've realized is that love is most un- misunderstood and misinterpreted word in today's generation. Why? Because we use love to describe almost anything that we like. I love ice cream. I love the weather. I love this bag. I love the food. I love my wife, <laughs> etc. But to say that I love my wife in the same sentence that I love the weather doesn't really make any sense, right? For example, if you ladies say that I love shopping with my girlfriend and I say that I love my husband, no? are you really saying that you love shopping more than your husband? Okay, bad example, perhaps. <laughs> okay, let's try another one. How about for the men? If you say that you love sports, Coach Nate, Jaka si Gino, you guys love sports, you guys love basketball. If you say that you love sports, you love basketball, you say that I love my job, right? Okay, another bad example, I'm sorry. But I hope that you get my, po- my point that we use love to describe everything that we like and we lump it all together and so we need to have that biblical knowledge of what love is. So a lot of people today, they long for love, they're not necessarily receiving it the way that they would want it. Just when they think they got it, parang kulang. This is not the love that I want. And the reason is that most people in the world don't really know what genuine love is. And here in our world, we have various of love problems. So number one is that people say it, but they don't show it, right? You know, so, so there was a research survey done with young people um, in high school and college students where they were asked what some reasons why you're having a hard time, um, uh, a difficult time growing in your relationship with God. And a lot of them said that it is because they don't see it in their parents or the lack of modeling from their parents. Their parents go to church, perhaps they're seeing something else when they're at home. You know, so they, maybe they're cursing and they're shouting at each other at home. They go to church and when they go home, they're cursing at one another. You know, or they do illegal things. They, um, they, um, they don't follow traffic regulations. So I know someone who goes to a prestigious um, Christian school. And um, this boy told me that, oh, my dad, you know, like every time that we're driving, he's always swearing. You know, so, you know, so that's not a very good thing, especially since they are, um, they are a very nice Christian family. I've known them for quite some time, and yet that kind of thing happens. So when we lack integrity, it's hard for other people to know what genuine love is. And so number two is we use self-love as an excuse to not be loving. In social media, influencers will tell you, love yourself, or um, it's all about you. You know, so if you love yourself, everything else would follow. You hear these things from social media and influencers. 
You know, that's why they're not loving, they're not caring, they're doing, um, they're, they're doing good to other, they're not doing good to other people because they only care about themselves. You know, so number three, they grew up with the wrong kind of love. If I grow up with the wrong kind of love, I will continue to show the wrong kind of love until someone teaches me the right kind of love. So if you're growing up uh, abusive, you'll end up being abusive. Like what they said, hurt people, hurt people. You know? And so mga singles, Big Eastwoods, and it is, it is Big Eastwood Sunday today. If you are hurting, especially three days na lang, <laughs> Pray that at the right time, God will um, give you someone who will teach you genuine love. Okay? So, wag mo na muna isipin yung pag-boyfriend or pag-girlfriend because at the right time, ibibigay ni Lord yan. Kung para sa'yo, focus ka lang muna kay Lord. Okay? So, that's why we are doing this series because we are living in a time where love is very much miscommunicated. You know, actually, no, sorry. Uh, love is communicated. We see it in the movies. We see a lot of love movies. We see um, love music. I don't know what this is. Tinipe ko lang kay drama yan ang lumabas. So, yeah. And then we, every Valentine's, you get this um, kwentong Jollibee, right? <laughs> yeah, so, that usually have really sad endings. Right? So, how about yung palagi kang nai-invite sa wedding and you're always just a bridesmaid? Right? <laughs> Feeling mo magiging forever bridesmaid ka na lang <laughs> palagi. Okay? And so, how come love is being promoted all over the world but more and more people are not experiencing genuine love? So we are seeing more wars happening all over the globe and more people are longing for love. And so my prayer, prayer is that we'll have that right understanding of love as we go through this series. So continuing on, number four is so many wrong teachings on love. We're living in a world where there's so much wrong teachings on love. If you don't feel love, then umalis ka na, leave. It's all about feelings. If they don't accept you, approve of you, then um, automatic, they don't love you. So just leave. Understand that love is not always accepting what other people want. That's why we need to rediscover what love is. Is. So that is our series title. So tonight we'll be talking about love as taught by Jesus. And the title of our message is, can we say this together? Be known by love. Okay, so I believe that a lot of us grew up with the wrong understanding of what love is. So let's say that if your father or your grandmother, if your tito, your brother, your sister modeled it, and um, it worked out for them, but... Now, it won't necessarily work out for you just because it worked out for them. Yeah? So, or if it worked in the past, it's the right kind of love. It's not always like that. That's why we need to know what genuine love is. What is genuine love? So there are a lot of songs about love, like the one I sang earlier. I'm not going to sing it again. <laughs> so there is all of me, power of love, unchained melody. I, I will always love you. And the list goes on and on and on. But what does Jesus tell us about love? We see this in John chapter 13. Can we read this all together? It says that a new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It says here as I have loved you. So Jesus is talking to the disciples that I want you to love others the way that I have showed you love. So if you love others the way that you were treated, it could be wrong since there are many definitions of love going around. And so Jesus is saying that this is the right kind of love as I have loved you. Then 1 John 4, 7 says, A beloved, let us love one another for love is from God and everyone knows who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. So love is from God. He started it. He created it. He is love. The kind of love that we are to show others should come from the right source. So if it's from the wrong source, like worldly principles, it's not the right kind of love. That's why Jesus is saying to show the kind of love that I'm showing you. 
because the world is teaching is different. It's a different kind of love. So it says here that we will never get love right if we don't get it from God. Understand that love is not God, but God is love. He is the perfect picture of love. The best, the best way that God showed that is when he sent his son to die for us, for all, to pay for all of our sins. This is genuine love, and we are to be known by that kind of love. So we won't get that right kind of love if we don't get it from God. The love of God is the only kind of love that can satisfy. So what's the title of our message again? Be known by love. And here is the, the biblical definition of love. Love is an unconditional commitment towards imperfect people to seek their highest good, which is often requires sacrifice resulting to God's glory. So this is what love is, and we need to apply this in our daily lives. So number one, what is true love? Is it unconditional, unconditional commitment? It means that it is more than feelings. So if love is based on feelings, if you don't feel like loving anymore, then you will not stay in love for a long time. So when I got married, one of the, uh, the commitments to my wife is um, for better or worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. So for my mom and dad, they are celebrating their 54th anniversary this year. That is a long commitment. Say me and my wife, ano pa lang kami, 18 pa lang. Eh. So 34 more years to go, tagal pa nun. <laughs> so, so 54 years is a long time and it cannot be dependent on the situation or feelings. So if love is dependent on feelings, I'm not gonna do it when I don't feel like it. But I do it because I am committed to loving my spouse. So being committed to, um, for example, being committed to helping my son, AJ. If he is sick, I will help him. I will clean up after him. <laughs> you know, so I am committed to do that. I cannot say that when he's sick, oh, I don't feel like taking care of you. You know, I cannot do that because I'm committed to him as well as to his mom. So when you say that you love someone just like the love of Christ, you will stay in love with that person for the rest of your life. But our problem is that when it comes to love, the biggest problem we have today is the lack of commitment. Would you guys agree? But when you are committed, it means that no matter how difficult the situation is, I will choose to love you. That's why a lot of marriages now are failing, especially in the U.S. Marry now, divorce tomorrow. <laughs> you know, if your definition of love is based on a, um, on a celebrity, if you feel like that's love, but then they end up breaking up, then you were disillusioned about your understanding of what love is. If we depend on other people for the definition of love, we don't have a secure definition. It's not genuine. But if we depend on God, the true source of love, he modeled it, and look what he says on this verse. He said that a new commandment I give you to love one another as I have loved you. Now, um, before Jesus said this, he showed his disciples what real love is. How did he show it? It says here, he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. We all know that he went to the cross. Sacrifice is the perfect picture of his love. Is his love. So during this time, he showed how much he loved the disciples, including the one that was going to betray him the one who's going to um, deny him. He showed his love to his disciples. So let's look at what Jesus did. It says here that uh, during supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from the supper and laid aside his garment and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So all the disciples were there, even the ones who's going to leave him and even the ones who's going to betray him when he gets captured by the Roman soldiers. And yet, what did Jesus do? He washed their feet. 
right? If you are Jesus and you know that this person is going to betray you, what are you going to do? You know, as you are washing that feet, perhaps I, if, I, if I was to do that, I'll probably be using steel brush and muriatic acid, right? To wash the feet. <laughs> so the act of washing one's feet is an act of service. Even though Jesus knew what they're going to do, he served them because he loves them until the end. So imagine your helper at your business who's stealing from you. Would you wash that person's feet if that person was stealing from you? My son AJ had a yaya before. And um, he wa- she was uh, kinukurot si AJ. You know, so she was being abusive. So would I, would I wash you know, AJ's yaya's feet? You know? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't. But Jesus was committed to serve them and not because of what they can do for him. So let's look at this verse from Deuteronomy. It says that the Lord did not make you his beloved, nor choose you because you were greater in number. He's talking about the Israelites here. Than any of the people, since you were the fewest of all peoples. But because the Lord loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers. So the Lord chose them because he loves them. That's commitment. When you say unconditional commitment, it means that it is not bound by any conditions. That they have to do something in return. No, it doesn't work out like that. So Christ's love is equals to, I will love you regardless if you show me love. So can you tell your family members seated next to you that I will love you regardless of what you do? Meron ba mga nag Okay, nag-smile lang. Okay. Okay, that, because that is a loving commitment to your family member. Sadly, the love that we grew up with in our world today is um, conditional. Let's look at the differences. It says that uh, commitment versus feeling. So the love we grew up in our world is conditional. If love is based on commitment, it is um, unconditional. But if love is based on feelings, it is conditional. So if you get into a fight, um, if it's a commitment, you forgive. But if it's based on feelings, you probably end up fighting them. You know, um, if it's based on commitment, you endure. You choose to do what is right, not what is right for you. And in a committed relationship, you learn. You don't leave. And it's also God-honoring if it's a commitment, and, um, unlike um, feelings, man-centered. So if it is by feelings, it's inconsistent. Sometimes love ka, sometimes hindi. Naramdaman niyo na ba yun? <laughs> Love mo yung tao, pero hindi ka niya love. <laughs> you know? So when you love someone, you don't always agree with what that person wants. Yung parang anak nyo, you don't always agree with what your son wants. You don't always give in to what they want because you love them. We can't be committed to everyone, but God expects us to be committed to those that he's going to put in our lives. Like your family members, your small group, the people that you serve with, the people in your workplace. So whoever God has given you, God is calling us to love them, to be committed. So in a commitment, you learn, you um, improve, you grow. So what is our message again today? Be known by love. And what did we learn so far about true love? True love is a, it's an unconditional commitment, which brings us to number two, which is towards imperfect people. So the people that we are called to love, they are all imperfect. So when you're so in love with, with another person, right? Uh, you say that I love him or her because he or she is perfect. You love someone because you feel that that person is so perfect. But we're not perfect. These people need grace, they need encouragement and truth. So one of the reasons why it's hard to continually love is because we are expecting. The hardest people to love are the ones who are closest to us. So when I was courting my wife, parang okay lang lahat. You know, everything was okay. Pag na late siya, it's okay. I will wait. 
You know, pero nung wedding din na namin, huwag kang malilate, ha? <laughs> you know, or pupuntahan kita kahit saan. You know, I went to the, I was living in the Philippines, I was living in the U.S. at the time. And I went all the way here in the, U, in the Philippines to pursue her. And she did the same thing to me. <laughs> you know, so, but because of expectation, sometimes it's hard to love. The more we expect, the harder it is to love. You know, so it says here in John 13:34 that um, that love one another. You know, like by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So, would you guys agree with me if I say that it's easy to love those who are lovable, right? You know, everything's going your way. That person is the nicest person in your life. It's so easy to love that person. You know, it's a, but we are called to love one another, even the imperfect ones, even your enemies. So are there difficult people in your life? <laughs> you know, the, the reality is that there are difficult people in your life, but what does Jesus command us to do? I say to you who here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Very, very difficult to do. Right? Next verse. Treat others the same way that you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. He wants us to be supernatural in the, the way that we love. To be Christ-like in the way that we love. And to summarize these verses, you're, su you're supposed to love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who persecute you. And if you only love those who love you, what's the difference? Ang hirap, no? <laughs> and also, be a difference maker in the way that we love one another. So it's easy to love someone who is difficult, maybe one day lang, or maybe just a week that you have to bear with that person. Maybe it's easy, right? Kaya lang, ang tagal na eh. You know, like it's been one year, <laughs> Sakit na siya sa ulo. You know, I've been living with this person for one year. And, she, and this person is so difficult to love. You know, so um, I remember telling our pastor about this one person that I had such a difficulty with. Sabi ko, Pastor, I've already forgiven this person seven times. Kota na. Bumingo na siya. You know, I don't have to forgive anymore. And then he, he reminded me of this verse. You know, it's like... Um, then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. You know, bigla akong naging mahina sa mat. <laughs> bigla akong nahirapan mag mat, 70 times seven. You know, and so the more difficult question to answer is that, how long will I keep loving difficult people? So if we look at ourselves, how difficult is it to love me? So should I dare ask my wife how difficult it is to love me? Or should I dare ask my parents how difficult it is to love me? You know, so Jesus is perfectly loving us for as long as that we are here on earth. He gave up his life for us, no matter how difficult it is to love us. You know, he wants us to trust him, put our faith in him, and he will give strength, he will give us strength to do this, to love difficult people. So let's look at what Paul tells us. He says to bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. The language here is that you keep blessing them. Do not curse to control your mouth. Control your word. So I actually learned this term from my wife early on in our marriage. She said to kill them with kindness. And um, when we did this in our life, people begin to wonder, what is it in, in that, uh, ano yung meron sila? What is it in, is it in them? I've treated them this way and they still, um, you know, they still uh, returned us with kindness. You know, ano ba yung religion, religion na nasalihan nila? You know? <laughs> you know, so um, people start to question, you know, what, what is it in us that allows us to be able to love other people that way? So Romans 12, 17 to 18 says that never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be peace, be at peace with all of all men. 
So far as it depends on you, meaning that you can't change that person. You can try, but you cannot. I've tried that with my wife. It's been almost 18 years, and it won't work. <laughs> you know, you can choose to forgive that person, but if they don't want to, it's hard to be at peace with that person. And so Paul says, as far as it depends on you. You can't control others, but you can control how you relate to them. And that's what's important. Then it goes on, says, never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You guys understand what um, heap burning coals on his head means? Doesn't necessarily mean maglalagay kayo ng uling dun sa ulo ng tao. You know, so, so for us Christian, people will say that you are allowing yourself to be abused when you allow people to, to abuse you. So what if your husband is abusing you or your wife is abusing you? How can you love that person? So in our D group, there is, um, there is someone there who continued to love her husband um, regardless of... Um, regardless of how he is, he continued to, she continued to pray for him. She and the husband started wondering, what is it in this? Anong meron dun sa wife ko that allows her to be that way? You know, so sooner or later, it allowed him to turn to the Lord. You know, he gave up his life for the Lord. You know, so that's something that we can do as well. You know, like when we continue to bring people to Christ, you know, by the way that we relate to them, you know, so, so again, when you heap burning coals, coals, you will convict the person because of the heat coming from God. The person will get convicted. That's just what's going on. God will convict wicked people because of the goodness that you show. And he will do something in their lives that will allow them to change. So it is a supernatural thing that God is doing to other people. It's not you. So choose to love be known by love. Because when we love like Jesus, we will see his protection. We will see his provision. And we will see his power. So, and he said that he, vengeance is mine. You know, so, kung ikaw yung mas nakakaintindi, intindihin nyo na lang, kayo na yung magbigay. So, the argument is, ako na lang palagi nagbibigay eh. But you can never go wrong when you keep loving like Jesus. Amen? So it's not about who's right. It's not about winning the argument. It's about winning people to Christ. So when you keep loving like Jesus, the difficulty becomes more and more easier. It becomes less and less. You know? Tama ba? Tama ba, love? <laughs> so what is our message again? Be known by love. So what's our definition of love? Number one is that it's an unconditional commitment. Number two is towards imperfect people. And number three is to seek their highest good, which oftentimes requires sacrifice. And the purpose of why we love, number three, is to seek their highest good, not my own personal needs, which often requires sacrifice. So highest good means goodness in God's standard, which is found in His Word. So if our standard of highest good is based on our standard, it's not going to be enough. That's why Jesus modeled it by sacrificing Himself, by giving up Himself up in the cross for us. So John 15, 12, 13 says that just as I have loved you, greater love has none, no one than this, that one laid down his life for his friends. So Jesus gave the perfect example of love when Jesus came to die for our sins. They said, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus. So does this mean that um, we're going to think of others more important? The main point of this verse is to do nothing from selfishness. 
how to show love to one another and exercise humility. In every action that I take, am I doing it for selfish reason? Or am I doing it because I want to be able to contribute to that person and love the person the way that God wants me to love that person? So I know someone here in our church who, um, who best exemplifies this. So for a time, she was being abused by her friends. Um, they were all, she was always getting verbally abused. Lagi siyang pinipintasan, lagi siyang... Just really mean things from this one friend. And then what happened was that um, this friend um, ended up getting really ill one day. What did she do? She visited her at the hospital. Pinagpray niya. Next thing you know, inakap siya ng friend niya na yun. And was very sorry for everything that she had done. So, you know, when we look out for our own personal interests, as she took the Christ-like approach and showed love to someone who was constantly verbally abusing her. She continued to show this person love and that's what God wants us to do. You know? We struggle with ulterior motives. Sometimes we love to manipulate others to get what we want. So if you're doing certain things that's not, that, uh, that's not honoring to God for selfish reasons, that's not love at all. Am I doing this because I love that person or because I love myself? You have to ask yourself that. Am I doing this because God wants me to show this kind of love to other people or am I just selfish? What does it say here? But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, habang nagkakasala tayo, He died for us. That's perfect love. Now, let's look at this story in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus invited to a house of a Pharisee named Simon, an uninvited woman walks. So, let's read this all together. It says here that now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. So, Pharisees are strict religious leaders. They are um, known for their strict adherence to the Mosaic law. At the same time, neglecting the weightier matters like justice, mercy, faithfulness. So, there's nothing wrong with following God's rules, God's standard, except when being right is more important than doing the right thing. You know, just, just imagine if you were with a Pharisee and you're speeding. You know, like, um, I'm sorry, if a Pharisee was in a car with you and you just um, suffered a massive heart attack or something, the Pharisee will, um, will stick to driving at the speed limit instead of breaking that speed limit in order to get you to the hospital on time. Right? So you guys get it? <laughs> Okay, so nothing wrong with wanting to obey, obey God's law. But sometimes it's more important to do the right thing. So the Pharisees were often in opposition to Jesus. But here in chapter 7, Simon, he genuinely wants to get to know Jesus. So what happened? And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, we would know who and what sort of person this woman is, who is touching him, that she is a sinner. She is a sinner, meaning she's not worthy. She's a prostitute. And she showed up uninvited. So the Pharisee here, obviously we see the Pharisee here is being judgmental. Not accommodating, conditional. That's the love of the Pharisee. She carried an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, which cost about a year's worth of wages. Imagine one year mo pinaghirapan yon, And we'll see what she's going to do with it. So it's a generous gesture of um, adoration as she weeps at the feet of Jesus. She didn't have a towel, so what did she do? She was drying it with her hair. She kisses his feet and anoints his feet with this very expensive fragrant oil. 
So understand that she's a prostitute. So when she comes in, everything stopped. Everybody was, um, eyes was on her. Right? She didn't, but what did Jesus do? She did not, uh, Jesus did not withdraw from her. He allowed her to touch him, which would have been an awkward moment for other people. Wouldn't you guys agree? Just imagine a prostitute walks in here right now and started touching me and started pouring doTERRA natural, um, essential oil. If you don't know what that is, my wife will gladly tell you later on. You know, a very expensive oil started pouring that on me. How do you think I would react to that? You know? <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, what would my wife think? <laughs> How did I get to know you? <laughs> right? <laughs> So, so yeah, but not with Jesus. She comes in as a broken woman weeping, being remorseful and repentant about her life. All she's ever known as a prostitute are men who have abused her and have taken advantage of her and have rejected her. But for the first time, she met a man, she met Jesus, who would genuinely love her and not rejected her. Mixed emotions of feelings of ashamed of her past, of her sin. And at the same time, um, she has this overwhelming love, gratitude, and adoration for the only one who can forgive her of her sin. Can you guys imagine that? The shame that was bound by her was broken by the love that found her. So this encounter with Jesus made her realize that her past and her sin and her guilt was washed away. So Simon the Pharisee, he, just, he, he didn't understand this, obviously. What's going on in this woman's life, nor her need for forgiveness. His own need for forgiveness. Simon was very judgmental towards her and perhaps towards Jesus as well. So Christians can sometimes be judgmental, right? Uh, when they talk about other people, <laughs> like they don't see their own issue. So I can't believe what kind of a cursor that person is. Yes, but you gossip. <laughs> or I can't believe that person drink too much. Yes, but you eat too much. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> gluten is a sin as well. Or I can't believe that pastor has anger issues. Yes, but you have bitterness. <laughs> you know, so... You have unresolved business. So is gossiping bitter, is being a gossiping bitter gluten be a better Christian? Does that make you a better Christian? Than somebody who have foul mouth, drinks too much, and have anger issues. You know, A sign of a Christian maturity is um, when you're more concerned about your own sin rather than the sin of other people. So let's continue. It says here, then Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he, was, and he replied, oh, what is it, teacher? A money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And they were unable to prepay. He graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? So obviously, you guys know that Jesus knows our thoughts. We don't have to say anything. He knows our thoughts. So Jesus' teaching moment here through a parable uh, one denarii is uh, it's a day's wage. You know, so Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged correctly. So look at that. Look at the point of Jesus is trying to make here. When he said that turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me the water for my feet. But she has my, she has wet my feet with her tears, and wipe them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. You gave me no kiss. It's a ritual during that time to honor your guests with a kiss. You cleaned their feet because it's dirty from walking around all day. You know, so what was Jesus' point here? says, for this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins have been forgiven. 
The woman did this because she knows that she's a sinner. She knows she needs Jesus. Your love for God will be in direct proportion to your understanding of how much He has forgiven you. If you don't love God much, it's not because He haven't sinned much. It's because you don't understand your need for forgiveness. So turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears. So, anyway, it's hard to love God and be known for his love when we don't see how much we need his love. So we see a lot of people here in our church but you don't really see them love God. Would you guys agree? And the problem is not because they didn't hear the gospel. The problem is that the gospel has no impact in them. You don't see the need. You don't see why Jesus had to die for you. You know the moment that you realize that you and I are going to hell. The moment that you realize that you are not worthy that you're a sinner, that we are eternally separated from God. That is our biggest problem. We're not going to Jesus. That's the heart of the gospel. That's why we're not going to love him. But the moment you realize, just like that woman, I need Jesus. I can't save myself. It's going to change us. says here in 2 Corinthians, for the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. So why would you be motivated to love? Because you have received God's love. I don't deserve it. I'm going to hell, but he died for me. And because of his grace, my life has changed. Because of his grace, I'm a new person and I cannot do this on my own. It's going to compel you. It says here, for the love of Christ controls us. It's going to comp compel you. It's going to control you. You can't help it. You just want to be able to love others because of what God has done for you. That's what that verse is all about. Because of God's love, I'm going to love others. You'll see changes in their lives. That's why for some, they say that they're a Christian, but nothing is happening. There's no transformation. There's no changes. So I don't know if that person genuinely, genuinely has received Jesus. If you cannot see that love in that person. If you cannot see that transformation in that person. Because God is not going to allow you just the way that you are. He loves you so much to change you. Because if you genuinely receive Jesus, you will change. And it's easier to love others. So what is our message again? Be known by love. So what's the definition of true love? It is an unconditional commitment towards imperfect people to seek their highest good, which oftentimes requires sacrifice, resulting to God's glory, and everything resulting to God's glory. You know why it's resulting, resulting to God's glory? Look at this verse from John 13 as we close. If you love like this, he promises that all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have that love for one another. Because people will be, will be attracted to that genuine love. If we love like him, people will be attracted to Christ. Ay, Christian ka pala, kaya ka pala ganyan. You know? Ay, taga CCF ka, kaya ka pala ganyan. One of my downlines, I saw her at a cafe that I was managing years back, and um, she invited her friends over for lunch. And then, in introduce ako, I see Alex, the group leader ko, sa Bible study. 
And then they all looked at her and they all asked, Ikaw, Bible study? <laughs> you know, I hope that none of us would have that, um, our friends wouldn't have that kind of reaction towards us. You know, I don't mean to brag, but I really love saying this story that um, that same cafe that I was managing, I think about two weeks after I started managing that cafe, one of the staff approached me and said, um, Sir, Christian po ba kayo? Sabi ko, oo, bakit? Halata, sir. Like, wow, <laughs> kinilabutan ako doon. You know, but, you know, and then after that, I started doing Bible study. I started being more nicer to them. You know, but, you know, but um, I, I guess I was doing something right. You know, so, um, so as followers, um, as followers of, Christ, of Christ, we should all want to live our lives in such a way that we exemplify Him. Because Jesus says that my Father is glorified by this, that you will bear much fruit. And so prove to my disciples, just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Bear much fruit. Impact others through my love. When you abide in the love of God, you will show that that love to other people, you're going to be more loving. We are to be known by God's love so others will know and receive God's love. When we love like Jesus, it's going to change lives. It's going to change families, communities. It's going to change this church. It's going to change our nation. If we show people how we love so I've seen lives change because of the love of Jesus. I've seen marriages restored because of the love of Jesus. Just like what Jesus has done to my marriage. He restored us. You know, if it wasn't for Jesus, I don't know if we were still together. <laughs> you know, I've seen families reconciled because of, his, because of the love of Jesus. You know, um, back in 2016, um, my father's family... Um, where there was a division in the middle. They were not speaking to one another. But because of the love of Jesus, that 10 year that they were not in speaking terms was reconciled because of the love of Jesus. I've seen that. I've witnessed that. I've experienced that. And I've seen it in my life because the only kind of love that can transform people and change this world is the love of Jesus. That's why we are to be known by His love. So as you listen to this message tonight, perhaps there is someone that God is impressing upon your heart. Maybe it's the person seated next to you. You know, impressing upon your heart that you have that, that you need to show love to. Bakit ka smile kaila? Nadistrak ako sa smile niya. You know, maybe it's your spouse that you need to reconcile with. Maybe in your family, your child, your parent, your sibling that you need to reconcile with. Maybe someone in this church you need to reconcile with. Your D group, someone that you had a conflict with. Whoever that is, remember that we are to be known by His love. The love of Christ. Why don't we all bow our heads and let me, let me pray for all of us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and reminder of how Jesus was relatable and approachable by those who are sinful and religious, righteous, and everyone else in between. We pray that you would help us in a similar way to be balanced in our lives, that people would be drawn to Jesus through us. Forgive us, Lord, if we've been so worldly that no one can tell that we're Christian. Forgive us if we've been living in such a way that have no impact on other people around us and that needs your saving grace so help us Lord to be more like Jesus that we can be used by you for the sake of your kingdom thank you for the reminder of the greatest love that you have shown to all of us and that is your love Jesus thank you for the lessons today about what true love is that is an unconditional commitment towards imperfect people to seek their highest good, which often requires sacrifice. 
and it's for your glory. I pray for our church, dear God, our CCF Eastwood Church, that would be a much loving church that will be known by your love. We praise you, Lord God. We honor you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Are you blessed by that?